Hi, when hope you're doing well from whatever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, when the notice was out that the Gaza Gashagwa will be addressing the nation from the official residence of the deputy president, uh, most of us believe that definitely something big is going to happen and Gashagwa might just resign from the office. The reason is that to avoid impeachment, so that he can have another chance to continue uh, his career in uh, politics. But instead, Gashagwa has come out clear to indicate that he has no any intention whatsoever to resign from office as a deputy president. What he has is the confidence that he has um, enough evidence to prove that Indeed, he is not corrupt, as mentioned in some issues of amassing wealth uh, worth 5.7 billion Kenyan shillings in two years' time. And then on other issues, he has really tried to answer to all the 11 charges against him. So his position is clear. He won't resign. Now, on the issue of um, hotels, and owning properties, the issue that came out that Gashagwa has close to 13 dormant companies, registered companies, but they are just dormant, 22. Then I noted another thing, because now he is now indicating that the properties in question was handed over to him uh, to be in charge or as a trustee by his brother, brother the late the little through the will he wrote two years to was it two two weeks to his death and that out of the entire property uh, his brother was giving him five percent ownership. We look on the figures it's mentioning a number of property, then the manner in which inheritance is being shared, you would sometimes wonder that a brother is getting more than what the son of the late is getting. So many questions. But he has shifted this that it was his brother's property. Now uh, there is a reason why Gashagwa has come to the public and we will be giving our views on the same. But again, another interesting thing is that Gashagwa, while he was uh, responding to the question around him calling for press conference to mention the NIS boss, <laughs> National Intelligence, he went on also to challenge that by saying that even William Ruto, when he was the deputy president, he went on to challenge the NIS of that time, the age of police. I think it was Mutiambai. Ruto said that time that he has never seen a stupid person like Mutiambai. Mutiambai is the most stupid person. That was a statement from one William Samway wrote. So Gashak is saying that even my boss did this. So I'm only doing what my boss has trained me. I have learned from my boss. That is his position. You might take it lightly, but this statement has a very deeper meaning going forward for Gashak. In any case, the Director General of this is not above the law. He is a public officer. Just like the president, the capital president, cabinet ministers, he too is subject to criticism, like any other public officer. In fact, I'll have videos. President William Ruto as deputy president at one time criticized the then director general of the National Intelligence Service. In another video, he heavily criticized the then inspector general of police for the performance. 
I have learned from my boss how this job is done. It's clear. It's done. I mean, nobody, the president is criticized daily. The deputy president is criticized daily. And we take no offense. The director general of the National Intelligence Service is not above the law. He is a public officer. He is accountable to the people of Kenya. And when one feels he has underperformed, he'll be called out. Because that is the nature of the Kenyan state. And this I learned from my boss when he was deputy president. Again, there was an issue that the president and I committed ourselves publicly that never again in our administration shall, we, shall ever we allow abductions and extrajudicial killings. Despite the police keeping on misleading the president. To now, we are continuing with our final discussion, but just a quick request for those who are watching and you have not, not yet subscribed, please. Consider subscribing to our return to subscribe as a master. Thank you so much. And again to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much. We went back to this discussion. Now, the Shagwa is expected to answer to the 11 charges in the National Assembly. But instead, before going to the National Assembly, the Deputy President has decided to prosecute his case in the public court. So in the public opinion court, Shagwa has prosecuted his case. His intention is not to answer the National Assembly. His intention is not to answer the mover of the motion. His intention is not to answer William Ruto. Shagwa's intention was to whip the emotion of the people of Mount Kenya and elsewhere for those who like him. So the entire issue is about whipping sympathy. He has come to dig deeper into the sympathy. Say so that going forward, while this case will be going on, Kenyans are going to, you know, view the situation as if Gashagwa is being um, intimidated, harassed, trumped up charges put against him. That is what the Shagwa is looking for, so that you don't see really a serious problem uh, that the Shagwa has committed. Rather, instead, you see a witch hunt against him. That's one thing I was looking for in this press briefing. Otherwise, why would you, why do you, why would you call for a, a press briefing to respond to a matter that you are supposed to go to the National Assembly and have two hours to respond to? We were waiting for the response from the National Assembly. But this time around, if there was any um, press briefing, what majority thought of was resignation. But that has not happened. So Gashagwa is still here. He will be going to the National Assembly. Now, he has really explained how he acquired his properties. So definitely, the man in the office of the deputy president is, is trying to use the last sympathy card ahead of the impeachment. So the message was for you and me, not for Ruto, not for National Assembly. Because in the National Assembly, these people are not guided by the evidence, the law, and fairness. They are guided by the money they normally get. If you reach out to them with good money, they will stand with you. They are going to wash you clean. That is it. So the message is not for those members of parliament. It is for you and me. But you know, in the National Assembly, it will not be these talks. There will be serious cases being prosecuted there. Kashaga to give evidence, if he has any. And those who are alleging also to give their evidence from their side as far as this case is concerned. So that is the situation that we are going to witness tomorrow, but he has assured us. The worry for me is that uh, Gashago, if he's not careful, he can be impeached. He might think that he has a serious um, 
a response that is going to help him to gain his position. But if the members of parliament will have enough evidence to prove their case, prosecute to the end, forward it to the Senate, they prosecute to the end, he go to the court and fail, then this man will be nothing in our politics. He will never redefine our politics because he will have been sent to a political oblivion. He will never buy for any elective seat. He will never serve in any public office if impeached. So he has the confidence and indeed his confidence are so promising but we will be waiting to see the reality on the ground how the matter will go about.